In this video, we'll do an example of an orthogonal projection. So we have a subspace of R3, the space spanned by these two vectors. This is an orthogonal basis, negative four, negative one, positive five, the dot product is zero. So we can take a vector and project it onto this subspace. As a brief aside, let me say that we're going to learn how to take any basis and turn it into an orthogonal basis. That's called the Gram-Schmidt process. So even though we need an orthogonal basis, that's okay. We can always get an orthogonal basis. Well, here's the formula for y hat. Once we find y hat, finding z is simply done via subtraction. And this is pretty uh, pretty plug and play, two plus 10 is 12, minus three is nine. That's y dot what u one. U one dot u one is four plus 25 plus one, Nine thirtieths U one plus let's see negative two positive two positive three four five six. Here is y hat. So that's three tenths u one plus one half. U two so okay. six tenths, fifteen tenths, negative three tenths, one half is five tenths. So negative ten tenths, five tenths, five tenths. I make that negative four tenths. 20 tenths, two tenths. Which could then be simplified a little. Negative two fifths. Um, Ten fifths, 
one-fifth. So that's y hat z equals y minus y hat and what does this work out to do to one is five fifths plus two fifths is seven fifths two minus two is zero. Fifteen fifths minus one fifth is fourteen fifths. In this video, we did an example of an orthogonal projection onto a vector space. It certainly and regrettably has to be admitted that these problems can be a bit tedious just because of the number of computations we have to perform. But as I've mentioned before, orthogonal projections are actually really quite important. We're fairly close to being able to see why.